So the continuous random variable x has the following PDF. Now for part A and B, they want us to firstly sketch this graph and then find the value of k, which is, as you can see, is multiplied to everything. And one thing to note, when you look at all this equation, we need to see that all of these are just examples of straight lines. Okay, and sometimes the k can be kind of annoying. So what I personally do, I would rewrite all of this as fx equals k times and then everything else. x minus 2 and then that's just going to be 1 and 6 minus x. And that's it. And they all have the, you know, the same ranges. So that's the basic bit. Now, what do we do from here? So to sketch this, well, let's just go ahead and sketch it from what they want from the intervals. So get your x, y graph out. And just plot a couple points. Just plot up to on the x-axis from 1, from 0 all the way to 6. So this could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And just be very careful when you see the, um, the ranges because this is where we want them to be. So let's see. So according to this one, we want x minus 2. So let's just label this out. So we want firstly from 2 to 3. Now what do we have? We can say when x equals 2, we get 0. So it should be on the line. Let me change the red actually. When we get x equals 3, it should be 3 take away 2, which is 1. So technically it will be up here. Let's just say 1 for the sake of it will be k. So in other words, we get 1 times k, which is k. Now moving on, so yeah, this is a straight line connecting. So now we're going to move on to 3 to 5. This appears to be a straight line of 1 or k. So this is just a straight line going all the way to 5. So that's quite easy. Now, let's have a look at the last one. So this is 6 minus x. So we can say when x is 5, we get 6 minus 5, which is 1. So 1 times k is k. So that's fine. It's the same place. When you put 6, you get 0. And that's it, guys. That's literally it. You literally get a shape of a trapezium. Now, <laughs> yeah, a lot easier than it looks. Now, for part b, show that the value k is a third. One thing to know about these kind of shapes is that the area underneath, underneath the, the curve or the line is always going to have a total area of 1. So just look at the shape. This is just a nice little trapezium. And it's got firstly a width. So it's up to 6, 2 to 6. So it's got a width of exactly 4 across. And another width at the top of 2. And yeah, and it's got a vertical height of k. And we know straight away that the area equals 1. So using the area of a trapezium, which is actually half a plus b, so the average of these two lengths times the vertical height, this will give us the area. And the area is 1. So go, ahead, so go ahead guys, just literally smashing the values. So we have firstly half and then inside we have 2 plus 4, so it would be half times 2 plus 4. And the height is k and it must equal 1. And well, smashing this in your calculator, you get 6 over here. Half of 6 is 3, so 3k. And hence k must be a third. And that's it guys, a and b has been solved. Okay guys, here we go, part C. Now, so now we need to define fully the cumulative distribution function fx. Whew, this one's the worst of them all. The key idea here is that we need to pretty much accumulate as we go. So let's just go ahead and put the obvious points. At some point, up until x2, so x values less than 2, we should have nothing accumulated. Whereas once we get to x equals 6, all the properties would have accumulated to 1. So this is already the initial conditions, yeah? Now, how about the rest in between? Well, we just need to integrate and then for the later ones, just add the previous terms. So let's just have a go, yeah? So watch me do this. So for the very first one, let's integrate this one from 2 to x. Why x? Because that, that is the definition of cumulative function. We need, a, we need something in terms of x. So let's see. So I'm going to call this one a, yeah? This will be the first one. So we're going to do a... B and C, and, and I'm going to put A, B, C here respectively too, yeah? So for A, just let's just integrate that. So we're going to integrate from K from um, 2 to X of X minus 2 DX. And I've already gone ahead and integrated this, so you should, you guys, I'm guessing, should get the following. And remember, K is 1 over 3, yeah? So doing this, you guys should get 1 over 6 x minus 2 all factorized. So this is my factorized expression. You get something similar, but it's fine. Now, that, that is literally done for that. And this is from the, the limits as given. So we literally, we can just say a here is 1 over 6 x minus 2 squared from the given limits, yeah? You could do it anyway, but I'm just going to write like this because it's quicker. 
Okay, now we do the second part. So let's integrate k here yeah, from 3 to x. So, it's, so same story above. And oh yeah, for this one, we also need to add the previous term. So we can say integrate from 3 to x of k plus we also add the value from a. And remember, in this case, we're cubing it. So we need to add from the limits 2 to 3, not 2 to x. Okay. So literally just plugging, plug in x equals 3 here and equals 2 there and you get a result. Anyway, doing this, what happens? So integrating k with respect to this, you guys should come up with a result like kx and then minus 3k. And then at this point, um, we just add the, the values of this one. So when you plug in 3 and 2 to the a equation, you should get 1 over 6. And lastly, you know, just tidying all this up and replacing k with its true value of 1 third. I just do this because it's easy work k. You should get x over 3 minus 4. 5 over 6. Remember, this video is only about, um, at least this question is only about showing you how to do it, not evaluating every integral because, God, that is long. <laughs> now, as for part, now as for the third part, C, so this interval here, we do the same thing from 5 to x and, of course, add the previous two terms now. So let's do it. Integrate from 5 to x of k6 minus x. So you can put k outside as well. And then 6 minus x dx. And of course, adding the two previous terms from a, 3 to 2, plus b um, from, what was the limits again? 3 to 5, yep. So again, plugging in 3 to 2 for a and um, three to 5 to 3 for b, we should get the following. So evaluate the first integral, guys. And you guys should get um, simplified one. So 6x minus x squared over 2 and then I'm, I'm plugging in as we go here minus 35 over 2k as you when you plug in 5 now this is the first integral now as for a when you plug in the values for a you should get 1 over 6 because we know that and as for b when you plug in the values for 5 and 3 into this b equation it should it should um, reduce to 2 thirds and now the final result, so tidying all this up and putting um, k to your original value, this first term becomes a third of 6x minus x squared over 2. All of this chunk over here with the right value of k will give you just a nice minus 5. And that's it, guys. Whew, and we're done. Now all you do is just throw this back into the equation. So let's see. b is um, x over 3 minus 5 over 6. For x values... Well, you know what, for, for basically these x values here, yeah? between 3 and 5, I use curly brackets to indicate that it's less, less than or between. I use the square bracket to indicate that it includes the values, okay? Just for your example, best to use the notation that you have here. Yeah? For c, same thing, so it'd be all of that, a third 6x minus x squared, a third 6x minus x squared over 2, um minus five and that's it all done with the same limits as above Whew, not easy okay finally now let's look at part d hence find the 90 percentile of the distribution well this one is very easy we're literally trying to find the value of the cumulative distribution at the point x when it equals 90 percent now, looking at the 90 percentile, this is pretty much the, the upper, the top 90 percent near, near the end of the tail. And looking at this one here, if I had to guess, the 90 is falls in answer, so it's probably somewhere between 5 to 6, just to be on the safe side, yeah? The mean will be probably between 3 to 5, or actually, it will be, because this is a trapezium, it's bang in the center, and it's got equal lengths. So yeah, it has to be between 5 to 6. So this means that this cumulative distribution, we can literally just plug in a value. So using, of course, the cumulative, not the density, my bad. Plug in a value for, just use, just solve for x, literally, and equate this equation to 90%. So what do we have? So now we have a third 6x minus x squared over 2. So the cumulative distribution for c must equal 90% or 0 0.90. Okay. And now subtracting across, oh, and, oh god, and expanding all of this, let's have a look. Expanding this, you should get 2x minus x squared over 6. Subtracting this across, we're going to have minus 5.9, 
All right. Yep, it looks good. Equals zero. Now, re re now rewriting this to the standard quadratic form, you should have so plus so moving everything to the right hand side, you should have, you should have a positive x squared over six, uh, minus two x plus five point nine, and yep, we're pretty much done. So to solve this, just use a quadratic equation, and you're done. So using the fact that x equals uh, minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a where a is 1 over 6 b is minus 2 um, c is uh, 5.9 then uh, just checking if it's okay then you just plug in when you do this in the calculator you should get two results firstly 5.23 or um, 6.77 which one's the correct one well let's go ahead and look at our distribution we know that x is between 5 to 6, otherwise it should be 0. So technically, this second answer does not belong, because if you get over 6, then the answer should be 0, but that's not true. So the only respectable value is this. And that's it. And now finally, guys, let's move on to part E. So here we need to find the probability that, the, that x falls between the mean and 5.5. This would be so easy if we if it wasn't for ex because we have the cumulative distribution and you just plug in f 5.5 minus f uh, the whatever the mean value is. So before we do this, let's find the mean. All right. So thankfully, the mean is is actually really easy now that I think about it. Remember the sketch we did in part A. It looked a bit like this. So it was just simply a trapezium, and we know it hits at two, and this part was three. And this part was 5 because I'm looking at the limits, and this part was 6. So it's actually symmetrical. So if, because a certain shape is symmetrical and it's um, pretty uniform, at least in most parts, we can literally slice it through the middle and then hence this would be the perfect mean. So the mean here is between 3 and 5. And yeah, so 3 plus 5, and yeah, it's literally the midpoint, so it has to be 4. So then EX is 4. So if you're wondering how this result came about, well, they just used the graph. Alternatively, you could be really long about this and integrate every single term, but that would be a very long process and you don't want to be doing that. Anyway, solving this problem head on, so EX is 4. Now we can just plug in 4 there, so we're going to have now the probability that four is between uh, X is between 4 and 5.5. Uh, oh man, it's been a long day. <laughs> so solving this one, you just literally say this is the same as F. 5.5 minus uh, f4 so literally find the two relevant ones from the fx so using the cumulative distribution function 5.5 lies between um, 5 and 6 so again this this is for uh, 5 and 6 so we pick this one here let me just highlight so we pick this one and replace this value with 5.5 and then for the second one, f4 you use the the b the b distribution and you place this for 4. And doing so, you should get an ultimate final result of 11 over 24. Voila. All done, guys. All done. Whew. Well, thank you. For, anyway, I just want to say thank you for watching my video. And, well, <laughs> I shall see you soon. Ciao.